Hello there, and welcome back to the Chaps Guide, to the channel where we go on that journey of exploration into men's style, self-development, and personal grooming. Now, you join me, bit of a different one today. It's a Sunday afternoon, I'm quite casual. You normally encounter me wearing a collar and tie, or perhaps more formally dressed. But today, it's just a Sunday afternoon, and I'm chilling in the woods and relaxing. And I thought I'd take this opportunity to have perhaps a less formal chat with you. And the conversation I'd like to have today stems from some comments I've had by viewers who've dropped me comments in the comment section below. And they've asked me about producing a video around etiquette and manners. Perhaps there's an assumption that a men's lifestyle channel has to have those subjects within the topics that we discuss here. Or perhaps it's because people, again, make an assumption that being British, I've got some inside knowledge about etiquette and manners. I can assure you that there are just as many poorly mannered people here in the UK as there are anywhere in the world. But I think manners and etiquette are fundamentally important to the subject of being a gentleman. In fact, as we embark upon our gentleman's journey through life, we have to display good etiquette. I think any gentleman worth his salt has to be the master of his manners because that, above everything else, you know, it usurps the wonderful cut of the suit that you're wearing or the shininess of your shoes. Your manners and the etiquette that you display to other people will be the thing that you are judged by most as you go on your journey through life. So let's have a chat about that such interesting topic. So the question has to be asked, what is etiquette? You know, what, what defines manners? And if you look it up in the dictionary, I believe etiquette is described something along the lines of the social code by which human beings treat each other in their daily encounters, or some variation of that definition. And I think that's entirely true. Now, these, this social code has been built up, of course, over generations and generations, consolidated by each new generation. And I believe that etiquette is a living thing. You know, it's very easy to say we should uh, carry out this uh, interaction when we meet people. You know, you doff your hat when you meet a lady or you do all these other things which seem to be this unspoken rule of the code of etiquette. But I adopt something of different mentality around that. I believe, as I say, that etiquette, manners, it's an evolving thing. It changes. The way that we treat each other today will be absolutely different to the way we treated each other a generation ago. And that's right. And, you know, etiquette changes to the modern sensibilities of our current lives. So it's important to realise that we're not just abiding by a set of rules which were, you know, kind of laid out hundreds of years ago and have changed not a lot. Etiquette changes all the time and it's down to us as the people living in this generation, the current generation, to change etiquette to the world in which we live today. Now when we look at etiquette in modern life, there's one subject matter within it which stands out as, you know, a beacon of why it's important that etiquette and manners have to be evolutionary, that they have to change to keep pace with modern culture. And that is the way that, if you look at etiquette and good manners in the round, historically, a lot of it has been based by the way that men treat women. You know, it's around these sort of unspoken rules where uh, a gentleman will hold a door open for a woman or will stand when a woman approaches a table where perhaps a number of people are seated or will offer a seat on public transport to a female merely because she's a female. Uh, and, you know, this has changed. A lot of women absolutely would not thank you today for undertaking those activities because you know, in the last few generations, the identities of the genders and the way that they are treated and they're to be perceived has changed. You know, women would not like to consider themselves, themselves to be perhaps the, the weaker sex and for a man to offer anything to a lady. But there are others 
who really enjoy that chivalry uh, which comes from a bygone era. I think the key to following good etiquette and manners is to read the situation which you find yourself in and to act appropriately. If you're with a group of people who you know quite well and you understand that if you were chivalrous to the ladies present that they would accept that in good grace and with the, the honour in which you intend it, it's fine to offer your seat or to you know um, stand up when a lady uh, enters or exits a room. But if it's unknown people to you, strangers, then you know be a little more careful because you wouldn't wish to damage um, somebody's sensibilities by acting in a way which perhaps could be seen you know less uh, in keeping with modern pace. Another thing when we're talking about etiquette is it's important to remember that different cultures have fundamentally opposed views on certain aspects of etiquette. So while I can sit here today in a moment and talk to you about what I think constitutes good manners and solid etiquette when it comes to interacting with other people, it's important to know that other countries, other nations, other cultures will have an entirely uh, juxtaposed view to that. So for me, if I was travelling to another part of the world on business or even in pleasure and I knew very little about the cultures there. One of the things which I often do, you know, I've traveled to the Middle East, I've traveled to the Far East uh, in the past where there are substantial cultural differences to the Western world, particularly to the way in which women are treated and you know raised voices, hand gestures, things like that. It's important to know these things if you don't wish to offend anyone. So the answer really is that research is key. So if you're going to go into a situation where you know that you're, you know, you're going to be expected to understand more of the cultural manners of the location, it's worth getting a bit of internet time and doing the research will make sure that you won't be wrong-footed in those situations. It's a really good example of how etiquette is really just about forethought, about you know, being prepared. So why is it important to display good etiquette and manners in life in general? Well, for me, I think displaying good manners is the very badge of being a gentleman. It is the most important thing. Now, when you meet people for the first time, you know, the eyes drink in the situation in front of them. And certainly people will look at you and they will look at the way you're dressed, you know, the, and I've often talked about this, the shininess of your shoes, you know, your poise and your bearing. But this is quite shallow and very quickly when you speak and you talk to people and you interact with them, it's the, the next thing which they will form a judgment on is the way that you treat them, the manners that you display. Are you courteous? Do you offer your hand to shake when you meet new people? Um, the way that you speak, you know, are you just being polite? And these are the things which will consolidate the way that you look if you're smart or they will stand against you if you don't uh, display the manners which are expected of a gentleman. And you know, for me, it would be far more important to be judged as a polite person rather than somebody who is sartorially elegant. You know, anybody can dress well, but not everybody can be polite and well-mannered. I think it's also important to remember that good manners and treating people with respect are not specifically linked to any job either. So people might assume that if you're a manager or in a public facing job or some position of leadership where you're uh, you know, interacting with other people, that's where good manners need to be displayed. But for me, good manners are something which the gentleman displays on all interactions on his journey through life. You know, regardless of whether it's professional, social, whether he's speaking to peers, superiors or subordinates in, in his journey. Um, and the way I like to put some sense to this is that there is um, a famous person called Dr. Edmond Lucard. Now he was a French criminologist who coined uh, Lucard's theory and that is that every contact leaves a trace. Now in the original context this was intended around forensic science, meaning that one physical presence that comes in contact with another physical presence will leave a trace of each other on each other and it, it forms the basis of modern forensic science. 
But the same can be said for our manners and our etiquette. You know, you never know when somebody that you're disrespectful to will pop up again at some point in your life and at that later point they might have a really important part to play in your future journey. So better is it not to be respectful, courteous and well-mannered to everybody that you meet at any stage of your life because when you meet them next time the thing that they may be remembering about their previous meeting with you was the way that you were polite, the way you were courteous, and the way that you treated them with respect. So that the trace that you left with that person was positive and can't be faulted. Now we may never realise the way that we treat people and the impression that that will leave on people in the future. Uh, and I, I use, I've got a great example. In 2012, I was attending a conference in Rhode Island in the United States and I traveled on my own flew over there went to the conference I was there for about three days I was traveling back to Boston Airport and I got a bit lost and I was traveling around you know desperately trying to find signs to the airport and I was getting a bit worried time was ticking by I wanted to return my hire car, you know, the whole pressure story. And I saw a police car parked at the side of the road. And I thought, right, okay, I'll stop and ask the police officer for directions. And I got out of the car and the officer, he was a really big hulking guy. And uh, he looked rather intimidating, I have to say. And I remember thinking, oh, you know, should I approach him? Should I speak to him? He seems really busy. I'm just asking for directions. I'm sure he gets fed up with people, you know, interrupting his important job with such stupid questions. But I thought, I've already got out of the car now. I was walking towards him. It would look stupid if I didn't. So I approached him. I said, excuse me, officer, you know, could you tell me where the airport is? I'm a little bit lost. And I have to say, Rather than looking annoyed, he was obviously busy, he was doing something, he was writing something on a pad. And he turned around and said, yes sir, of course. And he spent five minutes giving me you know, really good directions to the airport, in which he was really courteous. He took the time to make sure I understood where I was going. And in his interactions, he was really polite. He addressed me as sir on a number of occasions. And I got back in my car and I was left with nothing but the absolutely positive thoughts of that interaction. And I've never seen that officer before, I never will again. But my whole thought process around the police officers in Boston has been skewed by that one interaction. He's the only guy working from his profession that I've ever met in that part of the world. And no, my overwhelming thought is what polite and courteous people they were. And it just goes to show, doesn't it, the impact that being polite and well-mannered can leave on the people that you meet. So what are good manners? What is really good etiquette? And there's no easy answer to that, really, is there? Because wherever you live in the world, manners and etiquette will be different. So I could easily say what's deemed appropriate here in the UK at this moment in time but it'll be different wherever you live because you know your own culture will dictate the way that you interact with other people but in the simplest terms my interpretation of good manners is this i like to think that i treat people in the same way that i would like to be treated with the same level of reverence and respect for the given situation that I find myself in. So if I think to myself, right, if this, this was me, this is how I would like to be treated right now at this minute, that's how I treat other people in that situation. It's a fluid thing. There's no such thing as solid good manners all the time. It changes for every situation that you're in, and that's the way I approach the delivery of good manners in my life. Now there's one way in which I think good manners can be taken as a universal thing and that's in the way that we greet people for the first time. I'm not talking about shaking hands or bowing the head or whatever may be culturally appro appropriate for wherever you live or the people that you're meeting lives, but the way that we speak to each other. Now here in the UK, over the last sort of couple of generations, we've slipped into um, what I think is an overly casual way of greeting each other. And if you meet people in the UK today, you'll most likely be met with 
uh, the term mate. You know, they say, all right, mate, how are you, pal? How are you, buddy? And mate is probably the most common way that we address each other. Um, but I just think that is a little bit overly casual. Now, I really find it strikingly endearing when I visit the States where people will address me as sir or if it's a female they'll address them as ma'am or madam and I really like that. I think it does throw back a little bit to a bygone era but I think it's really nice to address people with what is clearly intended as a term of respect and I've often found that people react very positively when I call them sir or madam. It might sound a little formal, but it's intended well and it's the tone of voice and the way that it's delivered really as much as what you say, which is very important. I also think that if it's a bit of an inflammatory situation, you know, whatever it may be, you're in a shop and somebody's complaining about something or you're in a public facing role and somebody's arguing with you, um, when you're overwhelmingly courteous to them and you address them as sir or madam, it's really difficult to be rude to somebody who's being respectful and polite to you. So it can be a really good way of de-escalating situations which might be rising as well. So I think, you know, the way that we address each other, sir, madam, or whatever is equally culturally appropriate in your zone of operation, um, can be something which can be still grasped and enjoyed in this modern era. Now there's one area of our greeting when we meet strangers or people for the first time or even friends and people who are known to us that I think is important and that's the handshake because the handshake takes our, our interaction with these other people to another level. It becomes physical, albeit, you know, I'm, not, I'm talking about normal times when there's not a global pandemic taking place. But I think when we take hands, we shake each other's hands, you feel the strength of your character and the warmth of your heart. And you convey that to the person that you're meeting. You're showing them that you, you are handing them part of yourself and it's a really important interaction for me personally. I take, a, I take a lot of stead by the quality of a person's handshake. You know, if somebody offers you a sweaty, limp hand, it's very different to offering a firm, solid handshake. So if you ever have a handshake from me, you know, please judge me on it because I will be offering you the strength of my character and the warmth of my heart in the hand that I offer you. So just to round it up, let's talk about some of the basics. For a start, Punctuality. This is fundamentally part of etiquette as far as I'm concerned and I adhere to the principle there's no such thing as being early. You're either on time or you're late and I would rather be an hour early than a minute late. Um, although you know I wouldn't arrive at my host's uh, party an hour early, you, you make sure that you're there and you're going to be walking in through the door you know five minutes before the allotted time. Punctuality, really important as is prioritizing human interaction over electronics. You know, have you ever been speaking to somebody and their mobile phone has rung and they've said, excuse me a minute, I've got to take this. They get the phone out and you know, they prioritize that telephone call over you. And the reality is in most cases, they've no idea who's going to be calling them, yet they deem it more appropriate to take that call than spending physical real time with you. For me, that's unacceptable, it's disrespectful, it's discourteous. Unless they're expecting a phone call from their pregnant wife or, uh, or you know, a phone call from the hospital for some really important test results, there's nothing really that can't be put on the back burner, particularly if it's coming through on a mobile phone. So prioritize humans before technology. Another really important part of good manners when it comes to conversation management, and that's being an active listener. Remember the old saying, you've got two ears, one mouth, and that's the ratio that you should engage with people in conversations. Listen to what they've got to say and speak when it's appropriate. Don't be constantly the person who's trying to get their point across, speaking over other people and just waiting for a break in the conversation to get your views in. Listen to what the other person's got to say. Really listen. Don't just stand there looking at them and the words are just passing through you. Listen to what they've got to say. 
and then react to it. It really makes people feel important if you spend time absorbing what they've got to say and then responding to it. That is a real conversation. And finally, profanity. Right now I live in a country where the English language, well, probably made its debut in England. And it should be the country where the language has evolved to its highest point. But it's not the case. Profanity, bad language, swearing has really shouldered its way into normal speech in this day and age. And it really makes my teeth creep when I'm in conversations with people and they will use, you know, bad language. And in fact, because of the exposure to the media, um, extreme bad language, and you'll know the words I'm talking about, have really, uh, you know, really become almost the norm. Now, I think there is no place for bad language in good manners, and good etiquette when you're a gentleman and you're interacting with other people. Now that's not to say I don't swear, you know, my, my, my background is not uh, without bad language. I served in the military for 10 years and believe me, I spoke in a forked tongue myself from time to time, but now as I've grown older, I'm more respectful to people than to use bad language in ordinary conversation. It is reserved in my vocabulary for those occasions where, you know, only those words will do. Uh, and that's rare. You certainly don't ever hear me using bad language in any interaction that I've had with you in the 130 plus videos that I've made. You simply won't hear it. And you never will, because I've got more respect for you than that. I will not use bad language in our interactions, because I'm courteous to you. And that's the way we should adopt our conversations with everybody. And if you don't use bad language, the people you speak with won't do so either in the fullness of time. They will understand that's not acceptable and that's how we change um, the way that people speak to each other. So why not join me on that crusade? Use bad language only when absolutely necessary and not part of daily life. So there we go. Now I would have loved to have gone on and I've probably spoken far too long as it is. This is quite a long video right now. Um, but as I say, it's impossible to unpack all the intricacies of good manners and etiquette in any video, which is less than hours and hours in length. But I hope my thoughts, my views, and the way I apply good manners and etiquette to my life have been beneficial to you in perhaps forming your own thoughts around that. If they have, and if you've got some different thoughts, let me know in the comment section below. I really love to hear from you. And if you've enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. And if you're a non-subscriber, why not click that button and join us into the future? That way you can come on the journey with me as well. So thanks for listening today. I've enjoyed taking this opportunity to chat through this interesting topic with you. Until the next time, take care, sir, and I'll see you again soon.